three. Okay. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. How are we all feeling? Good. Are you enjoying the crossing of what us Australian and Kiwis call the ditch? Um, otherwise known as the Tasman Sea. This is my calmest crossing ever on the Tasman Sea. So really, pat yourselves on the back. Whoever brought the weather with them did a marvellous job because this is a, a fabulous crossing. Now today we're moving on from marine biology and we're moving into a topic which I find really, really interesting and that's anthropology. And we're going to uh, delve into the most recent common ancestor and also human migration out of Africa spreading around the world, in particular Australia and New Zealand. So we'll get straight into it with the disclaimers and the forwards. First of all, this lecture in anthropology, is there any people who are anthropologists in the room? Did maybe a major or anything like that? Nobody at all? Wonderful, okay. <laughs> Moving on. The emergent aspect of information. As information is constantly emerging. It's constantly coming out and it's constantly being refined, reformed, all those sort of things. So basically this lecture is based on the scientific consensus today. Tomorrow it could be something different. Now uh, this is the fifth version of this lecture in the last three years. Okay? I have to keep changing it because the information keeps getting changed. There's many, many theories out there and basically that's what we're doing. We keep moving from theory to theory as more evidence uh, appears for one than the other. So, what I say, and this goes for all my lectures, if you have a piece of information you might have read in the newspaper that I missed last week or anything like that, prove me wrong so I can expand my knowledge. Okay? I want to be giving you the, the correct information. If you feel any of the information I've given you, uh, there's something new that just got released that I might have not heard about, please come and see me so I can revise and go to version 6. Um, there is no right answer, only the right answer today. So that's the emergent aspect of information. Now, I do, if in a couple of slides time, do briefly talk about Charles Darwin. Now, are there any creationists in the room? If there is, a uh, the few over there, yep. Now, basically what I like to say is that there is nothing in the information I present today that negates a creator. There is absolutely nothing and they're not mutually exclusive, okay? So even though I briefly mentioned Charles Darwin just because he uh, described what I want to describe, the, 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 he was the first person to do it and also did it quite well, um, there is nothing that contradicts a creator in this, in this stuff. There always has to be a creator at the end, so at the beginning, so don't, uh, don't fear when the Charles Darwin slides come up. Now where did we come from? Well about 200,000 years ago. Um, somewhere in East Africa and we evolved from Homo erectus. Now a big thing is we did not look like modern Africans. It's kind of a bit of a fallacy. People think we all look like modern Africans. We look totally different. Um, this is Homo erectus. Really they haven't even got any models on Homo sapiens of what they would have looked like during that time. It's, uh, it's a bit hard to, uh, to deduce. Now a piece of information that came out very recently was the Ida. Did anybody catch this? The missing link that came out? Yeah. I did this lecture and then this information actually came out about two hours later on the, on the ship and there was all sorts of commotion going on. So I do include it just to show you that we keep finding these fossils and this keeps sort of adjusting the way that we perceive anthropology. 47 million years old, found in uh, Germany. It's actually been sitting in a private collection for the last 26 years and eventually it actually got to some scientists and some scientists had a look at it and they are quite astounded by it. They say it's the missing link. I think that's probably pushing it a little bit too far. It's just one of the transitional stages between uh, basically lemurs and primates, which is where we think we came from at this point in time. But tomorrow could be a different story. Very inconclusive. And it's the opposable thumb. That's what gave away Ida. She's got an opposable thumb, but she looks like a lemur. So we're thinking that is the sort of the stepping stone. And uh, this is a... <laughs> This is a brief sort of a diagram of where and how we evolved and the different fossils that they've found and every single week they, they add more arrows and stuff, so just ignore it. <laughs> it's true, it's true. Now, good old Charles Darwin, he was one of the first to suggest 
that humans had a common ancestor that was out of Africa. And in The Descendant of Man in uh, 1871, he writes, I'll read this verbatim, in each great region of the world the living mammals are closely related to the extinct species of the same region. And this is where he got his whole evolution thing from, of course. It is therefore probable that Africa was formerly inhabited by extinct apes closely allied to the gorilla and the chimpanzee. And as those two species are now man's nearest allies, it is somewhat more probable that our earliest progenitors lived on the African continent than anywhere else. Sounds pretty plausible, doesn't it? The fossil evidence that we have of humanity, and this is just a brief little timeline to give you a bit of an idea, 5.8 million years ago, we started walking on two legs. Meat eating began 3.5, we got stone tools at 2.5, Homo erectus comes onto the picture at 2.0. So we already were using stone tools before Homo erectus came on the scene. That's quite important. First migration out of Africa 1.8 million years ago, that's for Homo erectus. Homo sapiens haven't even come on the scene yet. First use of fire, 1.6 complex stone tools. We were building shelters half a million years ago, way before Homo sapiens and our current sort of uh, species was on this planet. That's also pretty important. Early evidence of cooking and Homo sapiens only the last 200,000 years. So really, we're just a blip on the old evolutionary chain. Now, the modern research is pointing to two pieces of the genome, which are pretty uh, very useful in deciphering human history. And there's two ones. We've got the mitochondrial DNA and the Y chromosome. These are the only two parts of the genome that don't get shuffled around. And so we can use them to trace back our, our lineage all the way back. So hence the mitochondrial, they generation to generation, they're intact. They don't change and so we can track them all the way back to find out where we came from and also find out our most recent common ancestor, which is a very, very hard little idea to get your head around, but we will attempt it right now. The real Eve. And there's some great books out there. Please have a read. I'll give you a bit of a, some ideas of some of the books you should read at the end of the lecture. But mitochondrial Eve, or African Eve as she's sometimes called, is the matrilineal most common ancestor for all currently living human beings. It's a hard one. Lived in Africa about 172,000 years ago, probably Kenya, around that area there, and uh, proposed many years ago by analysing fossils and stuff, and it actually has been discovered or proven to be correct by sampling mitochondrial DNA in the population today. So what I'm saying with the real Eve is that all females living today are descendant of this one lady. Do you all understand that? Yeah. It's, a, it's a hard one to get your head around. So technically, I mean I say all females, but really everybody living today on our planet that's our great, 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 great fill-in-the-blank grandmother, basically. So we're all descended from that one, one lady. Does not apply to humans that are not alive today. And that's a real tricky one to get your head around. So if somebody who was living 200 years ago, that may not be the case. Now, it's probably a bit further back than that. Maybe a thousand years ago, if you were living, you may not have been a descendant of that lady. You were probably a descendant of a, of a woman that lived maybe a thousand years before her. But, of course, we can only work out the one that it, uh, applies to people living today. We also have Y-chromosomal Adam. I thought I'd just put Schwarzenegger in there for you. <laughs>